Now, Stephen, Christina, and Maricela, thank you so very much for joining us. Thank you, Kim, and thank you for that introduction. It's a pleasure to be working with the World Affairs Council Town Hall on this very important event. And um, we don't have a, a, a lot of time for this session. We're going to get right into it. I'm delighted today to be joined by two experts in international trade. As Los Angeles is one of the most important trade centers in the entire nation, if not the entire world, um, with uh, Los Angeles County as one of the largest economies in the United States. And as we're facing this important um, global crisis, we're seeing more and more the interdependence of, of international trade and how that affects not only the world, but this entire region as a whole. So today we have quite a few questions we want to go over and really talk about and understand what's happening around the world, especially what's happening in Los Angeles. So again, today we're joined by Christine Peterson, the Director for Trade and Investment at Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti's uh, Office of International Affairs, as well as Maricela Caraballo, Director of Trade Development at the Port of Los Angeles. Christine has uh, years of experience working previously at the U.S. Trade Representative's Office, the U.S. Department of Commerce, as well as the U.S. Interior. So um, we're going to start with Christine to basically get a, a short overview in terms of what you're seeing around Los Angeles and the impact around the world and maybe a bit of the history behind it as well. Christine? Absolutely. Um, thanks, everyone, for, for having me to um, the Los Angeles World Affairs Council and Town Hall. Um, to, to World Trade Center LA, and of course, thanks to my uh, co-panelist, Maricela. Um, to everyone who is uh, joining remotely, I want to say thank you for your cooperation with the Safer at Home order um, and activities like this that really embrace the virtual means of um, connecting and informing one another of developments and, and our needs are really important. So. Um, thank you so much for doing your part. I know it's um, not easy um, for for people that are on the on the line or joining that um, have come forward with donations, offers of assistance, uh, leads on supplies, uh, including and especially our international community and consular corps. I want to thank you for that as well. Um, I, there are three points um, that I'd like to discuss during our our time today. I'll just give a quick overview of them. One is to share what the city is doing, how the city is looking at this um, public health crisis and, and the measures that we've taken, um, and to invite your input. Um, I'd also like to give a little bit of perspective on the, the intersection of trade policy and pandemics, uh, and then also encourage continued international coordination and collaboration like you're doing right now today. So first, um, what the city is doing uh, first and foremost, we're treating the COVID-19 outbreak as a public health crisis. So we are, um, we, we're treating it as a public, by that I mean, we are dealing with the economic impacts or consequences as a result of the public health crisis. So as opposed to the 2018 Great Recession, that was an economic crisis. Um, this is a public health crisis that has economic effects. So the focus is really on testing sites, resources. Um, we just launched a new health worker portal for people to um, to sign up, and, and um, if they're if they're not working, um, we're uh, focusing on the most vulnerable. So that means our unhoused populations, um, immigrant undocumented po undocumented populations, um, and uh, seniors or homebound who. Um, need food delivery and extra resources. Um, we also are rolling out resources for small businesses. So there's an $11 million fund for microloans for small businesses in Los Angeles, as well as an uh, eviction on commercial, mor or excuse me, a moratorium on commercial eviction. And of course, we're rolling out all of these efforts in real time, all the information in real time, so always go to coronavirus.lacity.org. The mayor is also giving daily press briefings that you can find um, on that website after they're, they've concluded or you can watch live on his Facebook page. So um, going to the, the perspective on the trade policy of pandemics, um, the biggest point I want to make is that protectionism is not the answer. So at all stages, I think there are three main inflection points when it comes to trade policy and pandemics. One is the, the preparedness, so in advance of an outbreak. 
The second is during an outbreak, what trade policy measures are taken. And third is the recovery phase. Um, there will be a lot of time for people to look uh, with hindsight at uh, the lead up to this outbreak and the trade policy um, decisions that have made an impact on our preparedness. But one thing I'd like to mention is um, for the past two years, the Section 301 tariffs on medical products from China have hampered our preparedness. So the heightened tariffs of 10 to 25 percent on almost $5 billion of medical exports from China, um, totaling about 26% 20 of all U.S. healthcare imports, um, really caused a, uh, a decrease in our, in our preparedness. Um, and there were warnings of that in advance when there were testimonies at the Section 301 hearings um, from the healthcare community saying it's, it takes two years to shift supply chains. So from 2018 to 2020, that's what we've seen a lag. But that's in the past. Uh, where we're at right now is stage two. We're in an active global pandemic. And what trade policy needs to do now is to allow and facilitate medical professionals and hospitals to have access to medical supplies of the highest quality, uh, at the lowest cost, and of course, as quickly as possible. And that means from wherever they can be sourced, including China. So several weeks ago, USTR did exempt medical items from China for, from the 301 tariffs, um, and they did subsequent exemptions. So, so that's good. Uh, I think it also is a signal or uh, <clears throat> a sign that those tariffs shouldn't have been put in place um, in the first instance. And we would argue that it still isn't enough that um, Chinese exporters are going to face multiple de demands from around the world. So um, if there's only a temporary exemption, they could very well prioritize uh, the needs of, of other countries and other buyers in other countries. Um, it is great to hear that FDA is also working with importers on um, giving more instructions or clarifications about what personal protective equipment needs their, um, needs their approval. Uh, XM Bank is doing um, uh, extensions for, for customer payments. They allowed or announced that yesterday. So there's good things going on there. Um, and then the third part, the third phase of trade policy and, um, and uh, the pandemic will be the recovery. And of course, we can talk a lot about that later, but I think there's a lot of ways we can use trade policy as um, an economic boost. So I'll stop there and turn it over to to you, Stephen. Great, thank you so much, Christine. Uh, you highlighted a couple really important points, specifically uh, USTR's ex uh, exemption for medical supplies right now. It's gonna be very important to us as we're seeing that China's recovering from their, their um, own epidemic issues that um, started in Wuhan a while ago, and now they have um, excess capacity. So we've been um, been contacted by a lot of our, our partners over in China saying they want to help, they want to send us the medical equipment and supply back to um, the United States. And as uh, the gateway for international trade in Los Angeles, this becomes very important to us because a lot of these goods will be coming either through our airports or our ports. Speaking of which, um, the Port of Los Angeles is the busiest uh, container port in North America, not just the United States, but North America, playing one of the most important roles uh, for international trade for the entire nation. And during this in, in important uh, time, we're all looking and we're hearing a lot of different things that's happening around the port. So it's uh, fantastic that we have Maricela Carabao here with us to, to share some of her um, thoughts in terms of some of the status that are happening in, around the port as well. Having over two decades of experience in public policies and legislati uh, legislative advocacy, uh, as well as international um, relations with in international governments, uh, we're thrilled to have her perspective. Maricela, would love to hear from you um, in terms of what's happening around the port. Um, some, some status and some update would be fantastic. Great, thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Stephen, and hello, Christine, and everyone listening, and thanks to the Los Angeles World Affairs Council and the World Trade Center Los Angeles for conducting this important uh, town hall. Um, our first and most important message from the Port of Los Angeles is that we are open for business. Ports are essential to keeping the supply chain moving. As America's port, the Port of Los Angeles is the largest container port in the Western Hemisphere, just like Stephen mentioned. 
Last year alone, we moved over 9.3 million TEUs. Those are 20 foot equivalent unit container units. All of our marine terminals are open, ships are arriving, longshore labor's at work, the trucking community, the railroads, the distribution center, everyone's at work. We are committed to keeping the supply chain running through this crisis. From the goods that need to get to the consumers, to the parts that are going to the United States manufacturing industry, to the medical supplies that need to get into the hands of our medical experts, the hospitals, the care facility, that's job number one for us. Hey, great. Um, with that, let's uh, jump right into some of the questions that I think uh, we, we've been uh, wanting to get, get a bit more information. So uh, first, Maricela, can you give us a, a bit of an update in terms of what's been happening uh, in terms of port volume? We've been, uh, we know that Port of Los Angeles is one of the largest economic drivers for the entire region. It's creating hundreds of thousands of jobs through direct and indirect um, uh, uh, effect. Uh, so, as we're hearing about to slow down uh, in, in China, their capacity over the past few months, um, combined with the trade tariff issues that were happening uh, before, has there been a decrease in the volume coming through the Port of Los Angeles that you've seen? Great question, Stephen. Yes, we are experiencing, what we are experiencing is the pendulum effect since the port has had 41 canceled mm -hmm. ship sailings between February and April 1st. That represents about 26% of our normal vessel calls during this time frame. That is the 22% nine drop in overall volume when we compare February 2019 to February of this year, 2020. We are also seeing significantly lower volumes in March. We are estimating a total decrease over our first quarter. Um, and we are moving about 80 to 85% of our normal cargo volume. As we all know, Chinese production capacity was impacted by the spread of the coronavirus. As their public health crisis abates, production is returning. The Chinese manufacturing community has not ramped up up to anywhere near capacity. They are probably at about 50% of normal production capacity based on our estimates. Our executive director, Gene Soroka, has very good contacts all throughout Asia, and he is uh, keeping his um, ears to the ground he's working his contacts and he's getting the information directly for us so we can have the most updated information throughout um, we also have a lot of cargo coming from china most of you know that's about 55 percent of our cargo but additionally we have a full book of business in southeast asia as well cargo moving from vietnam indonesia malaysia is going full tilt right now Beginning the second part of April, we will likely see a 10% uptick in freight moving through the Port of LA based on our forecast that we have right now. There has been a lot of inventory in the country and those inventories have been used to keep supply chains flowing. Um, now we're going to begin replenishing those through the process and we expect to start seeing the activity towards the back half of April. Uh, we need to evacuate the empty containers that are beginning to stack up at the port and find all the distressed exports. This is important because we need to have the empty containers prepared for when China manufacturing community starts to ramp back up. The shipping lines have answered the calls of the industry to move out these empty containers, and the port will be welcoming three of the largest shipping vessels carrying 23,000 TEUs. The first vessel will arrive on March 31st at the Port of LA. We need to be prepared to catch this first big wave of imports which are going to be replenishment inventories for our distribution networks, then we're going to have to make that swing back and forth probably two more times before we get to August. August is traditionally the beginning of our peak season. So at that time, we will begin to see that definition, what that really means like. We have a lot of work ahead of us. That's fantastic to hear that we're going to be receiving our first uh, uh, major shipment uh, in, in March uh, 31st. As uh, we probably have seen over in the grocery stores and uh, our uh, CVS and Walgreens, um, the supplies are really dwindling. So this is definitely good news for us. Um, Christine, as um, the mayor has issued the Safer, uh, Safer at, at Home initiative, and uh, now more and more business um, ha are basically starting to transition to working from home, and we're seeing a lot of uh, impact as well to the economy. Um, can you talk a little bit about what you're hearing uh, on the ground right now at the mayor's office in terms of an impact? Um, and will we be uh, ready uh, when these big shipments start coming uh, from China as we're replenishing our supplies? Yeah, 
I think maybe the, the first thing to clarify about the supply chains in the grocery stores is that there, um, there's really no disruption to the grocery store supply chains. A lot of the, our food and um, you know, paper products are sourced domestically. The issue is just re the restocking. So um, there's plenty of food, plenty of uh, paper supplies. Um, the, you know, the LA economy has been very strong. The uh, LA County contributes more to the US GDP than any other single county in the country. And um, our metropolitan economy is, uh, our GDP is over $1 trillion. So the third largest metropolitan economy in the world after uh, New York and Tokyo. Uh, we've been having very low unemployment. Um, we've been outperforming all other large cities in America. LA has really had this, uh, been riding this economic boom. And I think that makes the current situation feel that much more drastic. It's um, almost like you're, you're hitting a wall when you're going 60 and you didn't even touch the brake. Um, so, but I think that um, that economic boom that we have been experiencing has prepared us well, in terms of our, our city budget, we have strong reserves, um, and the uh, the LA economy is so diverse. We're not a, a one industry town or a one shop town. Uh, we have services, manufacturing, trade, tourism, film tech, mobility, esports, spin tech, so many great um, sectors, and I think that's going to to work to our advantage. Um, as people are staying home, some industries are going to experience growth opportunities. Um, Esports is one of them with uh, mobile gaming, um, video conferencing apps, delivery and logistics. Amazon is hiring 100,000 people nationwide and Instacart just announced that they're going to hire 300,000 people across North America over the next three months. Um, food supply and retail is also booming as is healthcare and medical, of course. So I think um, we're going to see some of these industries that are doing well, some of these businesses that are doing well stepping up and we saw that yesterday, the mayor announced that Riot, Riot Games, the, um, the gaming company that's located here in, uh, in LA is going to be donating $800,000 to local nonprofits, um, including to the COVID crisis fund. Um, another thing we're seeing is some pivoting of, uh, of, businesses, of businesses in LA. We're the largest manufacturing hub in the United States. So textile manufacturers are starting to make masks and other personal protective equipment, gowns, boot covers. Um, breweries like Anheuser-Busch, uh, they're making hand sanitizer. So Anheuser-Busch, their Van Nuys plant is starting to make hand sanitizer. Um, you know, and elsewhere in the nation, Ford is partnering with GE and 3M to make ventilators, respirators, and face shields. Even at the city, uh, city employees, we're being repurposed. So as a disaster service worker, I've been picking up the line, uh, the help desk line and, and helping folks from, from all across the city throughout, um, throughout the crisis. So uh, we're all pivoting. And um, I think that's one of the great strengths of Los Angeles is that we are nimble, we're very resilient and uh, people are really stepping up. So I think that um, is an optimistic sign. That's uh, fantastic to hear about the retooling of our manufacturing to be able to make other products. And uh, thank you for stepping up to, to take on the hotline. It's a very important time. I'm sure a lot of folks are eager to get more answers. Um, as we're moving forward with um, kind of dealing with the medical crisis, uh, we've been hearing a lot and we've been anticipating additional um, capacity including the USS Mercy Naval Hospital that will be docked at uh, the Port of Los Angeles. That's uh, uh, great news for us because we all know that uh, the medical uh, capacity could be uh, a challenge for us in the future. Maricela, can you talk a little bit about um, what's happening at the port as we're getting ready for, for um, the USS Mercy? Sure, and I just wanna address one um, thing from our last question, Stephen. Um, when we, I was talking about the 23,000 TEU vessels that are coming, that is coming to the port of LA, March 31st being the first one, those ships are coming just to pick up empty containers. So it's not bringing in 23,000 TEUs of new items. It's just to help us relieve those empty containers. So I'm um, getting back to your question um, with regards to the USS uh, Mercy Hospital. 
Um, the Port of Los Angeles stands ready to partner with the Navy and the federal government as it prepares to bring in the USS Mercy to the Port of LA. Um, as we all have been hearing, the USS Mercy is a 1,000 bed hospital, will treat only non-COVID-19 patients to assist the local hospitals overloaded with COVID-19 patients. And at the end of the day, it's the welfare of our residents that's a top priority during this public crisis. Um, in addition, we've been working with our federal partners in the arrival. Um, we are um, responding to the emergency orders at the state that the ports are in an essential infrastructure and just as important, the broader supply chain is considered essential business. The governor, the mayor, um, and others have specifically stated that the supply chains need to keep moving and we take our essential role in this crisis very seriously. Great, thank you for that update. Um, I think there's a, a lot of uh, questions out there. Um, speaking of which, uh, we wanna make sure that this is an interactive uh, session and uh, Kim earlier mentioned that there, there are um, uh, participants right now that have been sending in questions. So I'm gonna pass this over uh, to Jessica uh, from the World Affairs Council Town Hall to help us moderate some of these questions that are coming in. Jessica? Great, thank you. Um, yes, we're getting a lot of questions in, so I will try to uh, get to as many of these as possible. Um, one thing I think, Christine, this would be for you is um, where are there any quick links, phone numbers, or areas where entrepreneurs and businesses who want to help out if they want to export their medical supplies or even offer to hire people, where would you direct those companies? Yeah, um, if you go to LA, excuse me, if you go to coronavirusLACity.org, um, you, you'll see the um, email address for the mayor's help desk. You can send um, an email there that uh, we're getting through everything as quickly as possible. Um, you may, if it's an offer for a donation or a sale, you'll probably get a response from me personally. Um, and then we are coordinating with our emergency operations center. Um, within the emergency operations center, there's a business operations center that is um, collecting all the leads and having them ready to go when we have um, a, a city supply need. And then we're also coordinating with the private sector through our mayor's office of economic development. Um, so we, um, that's been a, a really helpful way to, to coordinate all the various, and we have gotten quite a lot of, um, of leads and um, offers of assistance. Wonderful. Um, and this would be for Maricela. So how is the LA port making sure that materials coming in are virus free? And also do the port workers have protective equipment um, so that they, that they are staying safe? Um, sure, very important question. So the port, um, specifically our executive director has been working very closely, Mr. Gene Soroka, very closely with the Longshore Labor here at the ILWU and with PMA to make sure that our terminal are um, safe. Um, also working with the city of Los Angeles, working through the mayor's office and DWP, over 40,000 gallons of um, sanitizing fluid is being distributed um, to our workforce on our terminals. Um, our own um, construction and maintenance division with our hazmat teams are putting together the supplies and 35 ounce spray bottles so all our workers can continue to spray the equipment and make sure it, it's staying safe out there on the docks. Great. Christine, back to you. Um, you mentioned that the mayor's office is encouraging international collaboration. Uh, what form is that taking? Well, we have um, we have open lines of communication with several, uh, about um, 15 global cities that are um, the deputy mayor of international affairs is leading. So um, she is, they're exchanging best practices, um, things that are working in their cities in terms of responding to the, to the outbreak. And those are cities um, from Europe, Asia, Latin America, all over. So um, that's one way that um, at, uh, from the mayor's office that we're continuing to collaborate internationally. I think, um, it, I think it's important for, for everyone in whatever line of work they're doing to continue to reach out to their international partners, um, letting them know that uh, they're, 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 we're still here we're, we're open for business. We're going to get th get through things together. And, you know, it's also a great time to, to plan uh, as, as much as you can, planning ahead for how to um, 
to bounce back once um, once the pandemic is behind us, which it will be. We have to remember that. All right, thank you. Uh, next question is, um, relative to other drivers for economic recovery, how much will be attributed to international trade? Will certain regions be more important for recovery than others? For example, North American trade versus Asia. That's a really good question. And I'd be interested in, in Stephen's um, views on that too. But I, I would say um, after the 2008 uh, recession, one of the, or even during the recession, one of the big economic um, strategies was to increase exports, especially from small business. And I, um, that's also something that even before the pandemic, uh, we were focusing on. And there's new resources from the state, uh, the state of California, into uh, rolling out um, uh, resources, webinars, um, export training, and coordinating resources across the state. So I think we're that's even going to be more important in terms of um, accessing international opportunities as part of a, an economic uh, recovery plan. I would agree with that assessment completely. I think um, if you look back at um, uh, previous uh, incidents, which is the 2002-2003 SARS epidemic in Hong Kong, um, we we learned a lot from our international partners, and we saw that they had to adjust their their uh, business model very quickly afterwards. And so I think during this uh, particular uh, crisis that we're facing right now, we're seeing that. Um, E-commerce is going to be a, a major uh, potential um, recovery strategy that a lot of people are looking at. A lot of our local domestic companies who traditionally relied on a local supply chain and also a local uh, consumer base are now seeing that you can't depend on just one source. You really have to diversify not only your supply chain, but also your customers as well. So I think uh, in the future, we're going to see a lot more uh, potential opportunities for international trade uh, utilizing e-commerce platforms. Thank you. Maricela, I think this one is for you. From the perspective of port operations, if you consider port movements as a broader economic indicator, to what extent do you see supply chains moving away from China towards a more diverse Southeast Asia supply chain base? Well, China is uh, about 55% of the imports that come in through the Port of Los Angeles. Um, they are our number one trading partner, but followed very closely um, by our other trading partners, Japan, Korea, Vietnam. Um, and we're also looking at our, our full book of business, which is, includes Southeast Asia. We're looking at Malaysia, Indonesia. Um, they're also providing goods coming into this country. Thank you. Um, how will the drag on foreign direct investment have a wider impact on the region uh, regarding real estate, finance, and the technology sectors? Stephen, you might have some insight on that one too. Yeah, um, we saw over the last, uh, prior to, to 2020, uh, over the last few years, there's been an influx of uh, investment coming from around the world to Los Angeles to really help us after the, re, uh, the recession here in Los Angeles. And if you look at uh, not just downtown, but throughout the entire region, you saw a lot of new real estate development that were uh, uh, really supported by foreign direct investment. And a lot of that came from China. In fact, in 2016, the Rhodium Group did a report that uh, quantified about $16 billion of investment coming directly from China in just one year for California. And two years later, after the, um, the, the capital flow restriction order coming from the Chinese government, um, in two years, in 2018, that number dropped to $330 million. So that's a big drop for us. And we saw the, some of the real estate projects stalled and we're not able to do as much. So I think moving forward, uh, looking at this, um, I think the world will be looking for new opportunities. I, I think during, uh, as you see the volatility in our stock market, um, it's really creating a lot of uncertainty. But once we get to the recovery phase, I think people are gonna see, uh, to, to continue to see, as Christine earlier mentioned, that Los Angeles has a very diverse uh, economy with many different sectors. So um, talking about that diversification, they can invest in this region and they will continue to look to Los Angeles as a, a key destination. Uh, the most important thing for us is basically to get through this really challenging period and again following and heeding 
uh, Christine and the mayor's uh, recommendation, we really need to do our part to stay at home to make sure that we flatten the curve and not uh, continue to uh, escalate and elevate the, the pressure that's on our medical system right now. Yeah, good follow up to that one, uh, what you just mentioned, Stephen, to Christine. What have some of the most helpful tips uh, that other countries have been providing uh, been to, to the mayor's office? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think, um, you know, we, we've been looking at uh, what, what Italy has been doing, um, what uh, China has done, um, uh, Korea testing. I mean, part of it uh, is, um, you know, I, I'm not entirely, I haven't been looped into all of those conversations, so I'm not, I don't know the exact, uh, the exact things, but um, I think focusing on tenants um, and uh, that, that's been a, a, something that Italy has done and that we have done as well. Um, uh, the the te drive-through testing that Korea has done, we've, uh, as of um, a few days ago, have created testing centers with a, for, that the city is doing that are, that are drive-up testing centers for um, the most vulnerable or the most high risk. So um, th those are a couple of the things, but I'll have, to, I'll have to think about that some more. If I can jump in there a little bit as well, I think um, we've learned quite a lot from our partners over in uh, Korea and also in Taiwan. Uh, their aggressive and very clear communication uh, about directives in terms of what needs to happen and so that you don't have false information, you don't have rumors and you don't have fears driving uh, action and decision that's going to be very important. And that's why I think uh, with uh, Mayor Garcetti leading the way along with our county supervisors and other major uh, city mayors around the entire region, as you know, LA is um, uh, the LA County region has uh, 10.2 million people, but we have also have 88 different cities and over 100 in incorporated region. All these elected officials are coordinating together. Um, the Safe Safer at Home initiative was launched in partnership with the county, with the cities. And so this is really uh, uh, an important thing that we learn internationally that you can't have different messaging. You have to have um, a coordinated effort to move forward because we can't get through this alone. The borders are a lot of people don't even know when they're driving from one city to the next. So, it's, you know, when it comes to viruses and disease, there's, there are no there are no restrictions there. So I think that's one of the huge, huge lessons that we learned from our, our partners, from uh, whether it's uh, from Iran or from, uh, 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 again, Korea and, and Taiwan. It's been very, very um, uh, well, well heated, the, the lessons. Yeah, that, that's a good point. And for this next question, um, because of the issues with communication, making sure we're getting uh, accurate information, uh, major American news outlets have been expelled from China. And the question is, is there a concern about the reliability of information about economic and public health conditions in the coming days and months? And are you hearing anything from your contacts on the ground in China regarding this issue? Uh, I'll, I'll jump in as well for this one, if you don't mind. Um, so uh, just to clarify, Jessica, the, the question is basically, is it our news media or is it concerned about China, uh, what's happening in China? I think the question was about um, our American outlets being expelled from China. And so the concern about is the information that we're getting from the mainland, um, is, is it going to be information that's reliable if we don't have uh, journalists on the ground who can verify? Sure, sure. I think this is an ongoing issue uh, when it comes to international relations as well. Um, and, and whether we can trust the, the information source that's coming directly just from a state-sponsored media outlet. Um, I guess the short answer is no. Uh, we would definitely would like to have more uh, free press and to be able to get, get uh, information uh, from various sources as well. But at this point, you know, I think um, it's not so much about um, the the uh, information source that's coming from China, whether it's reliable or not. Right now, we really need to start looking at how do we work closer together uh, to build up a system that moving into the next step, moving into recovery phase, how do we not get to this point where we're not trusting the information? So it's really a good chance for us to evaluate how do we get here? And that's why Christine's earlier point in terms of all the trade policies, we didn't get here out of nowhere. 
it's based on some of the decisions that are made uh, in the past. So I think at this point, we really need to start self-evaluating as well and moving forward in the recovery phase. How, how do we work closer with our partners in China to make sure we don't get to um, this, this place again where we, we're not trusting the information that's coming from each other? And I'll just jump in for a moment and just add that um, our executive director, Jun Taroka, lived in Asia for a good part of his career. And he has his ears to the ground and working his contacts, um, not only in China, but throughout Southeast Asia on information. So um, the port has been getting information. We haven't heard anything about, or at least I haven't heard anything about um, the journalists being thrown out of China, but um, I will follow up with our executive director on that item. Great. Um, one question that's a bit industry uh, specific is, uh, I think this is from Maricela. Um, this gentleman works in the construction industry, and he is wondering if you anticipate shipment quarantines in the near to medium future. Um, he'd like to know about any issues that could affect normal construction scheduling. Um, we haven't heard about any quarantines of any construction material. Um, we are, our understanding is that construction is considered an essential part of um, keeping the economy going and an essential workplace. So like the construction that's taking place here at the Port of LA, all those projects are ongoing as we speak today. Those have not been shut down. So um, I don't have the crystal ball in front of me of what's gonna happen to future supplies, but I can only address to what we're dealing with today. Great. Um, and I think this will be our last question. Uh, this question is for both Christine and Steven. Uh, you've spoken on lessons learned from our friends to the southeast, but what about our partners in North America? Is LA City County working with Canada and or Mexico to make sure regional trade, bolstered by the recently ratified USMCA, doesn't take a major hit? Uh, is the mayor's office working with Canadian officials based locally and internationally to flatten the curve of this pandemic? And like I said, that will be the final question. Sure. Um, we have been working with uh, all the consulates, including um, the Canadian and Mexican consulates. Um, in fact, uh, the Mexican consulate was one of those um, that were very helpful in providing potential suppliers of um, medical supplies for us. So, um, uh, the, you know, there's a lot of talk about uh, the curve and where everyone is on the curve. Uh, Mexico is, uh, I guess, in some ways behind us by several weeks. So, so there was um, Mexico in addressing the pandemic before us right now could be a, a really helpful supplier of, um, of, med of personal protective equipment and other supplies. So, um, and then going forward, North America is, a, uh, is absolutely a focus of the mayor and of our office. Um, there's a North American mayor summit that um, was planning to meet uh, and had its first meeting last June. So the mayors of, uh, across the region are um, really uh, honed in on strengthening ties uh, across um, across our the cities and our countries as well as our countries. Um, and uh, USMCA, I believe, is uh, scheduled to go into effect in June. So um, that could be a, a helpful um, piece of. Uh, trade facilitation for the region. Um, and from our side, we've been uh, communicating with our, our partners over in Mexico, uh, as well as Canada, uh, in, in terms of um, issues uh, re regarding um, just business development and business in general. The consulates, uh, both consulates have been very helpful as well in terms of getting the message out to the local communities here. As you can imagine, Los Angeles has one of the largest Mexican populations uh, outside of Mexico. And so some, some of the traditional uh, news media information might not be getting out to uh, that population. So in coordination with the Mexican uh, uh, consul generals and their, the governments, they're able to get some of the information out to this population that's living here, which is very important, as well as our Canadian partners as well. So that's one key note uh, to, to highlight. I think moving forward when it comes to recovery, um, this is the part where, uh, to Christine's point, um, with USMCA coming into effect soon, uh, it will really be potentially beneficial for us. And I think we're all hoping um, to start looking at the, the positive side of things that we can get over this hump so we can start looking at the recovery phase. And at that point, our international partners will become 
uh, more important than ever before because uh, I think we're all going to be really start dealing with some of the aftermath that we haven't even anticipated yet. So um, I think that these conversations are definitely very important for us to continue to build on those relationships that we've already spent decades building before.